Hi guys, sorry this video has dropped a bit late, with the combination of it being Valentine's Day yesterday and my son's birthday today, I haven't had too much time to record the video. So we've just completed our fifth game of the season, marking the halfway point. That game has been Pandora's Palace, released in 1984 by Konami, and to be honest, it's a bit of a hidden gem. I really enjoyed playing over the two weeks, with the game releasing four years after Donkey Kong, never seeing a home port, and only releasing in the US, it's a bit of an unknown one. But like most Konami games, it's a fun one too. I think most people were enjoying this one. An interesting feature of it is the number of hidden items on the levels. On the first one, if you make a jump across from the sliding platform and then go back up, you release the bird, which is holding an extra life. On other levels, there's similar things, where maybe you pass a certain block, or maybe you go back up on some of the platforms, releasing other hidden items. And also different enemies yield different amounts of points. Although a difficult one, I think most people were enjoying themselves here. So let's take a look at the scores. I've had 16 scores sent to me, which is great. In 16th is a bit of a token effort from Luke, and then my mate Rob on 33,000. But from Retro Dad Stan in 14th, through to Milthy in 8th, the scores were pretty close, from 50 odd thousand, to 80,000. Then, to Colin in 7th, there's a bit of a jump. He's the first over 100,000. Colin, Blue Yak, and Bob were all close, through to 5th. Then My Retro Tech is on 137,000 in 4th. Ian has another good score in 3rd with 176,000. In 2nd is Big Jaffa with 197,000, and he posted his run on YouTube, so it's well worth taking a look. But taking his first win of the season after a bit of a gap, is Graham 10 Shearers. Great job from Graham, I'd usually expect him to do well on this sort of game. He scored 233,820. With 5 games left this season, it's all to play for, so maybe Graham can close the gap on Juff. Due to my limited time, there won't be any graphs, so let's take a look at the scoreboard. So here's the latest league table, and to be honest there's not been much movement. Down the table we have a couple of swaps, but these are mostly people overtaking people who haven't played this round. There'll be a 5 game minimum to make it to the final table, so these guys have only played one game, probably will get excluded next round. Further up the table, my retro tech has got ahead of me, and then Ian has got ahead of Paul. At the very top, Big Jaffrey is obviously still our leader, but Graham has closed the gap slightly, he's now 104 points behind. And with 5 games to go, if things go in Graham's favour, he could catch Jaff. And so let's see what our next game will be. So we're on to our next genre, which is one of my favourites, Puzzle. I've had 11 games sent to me, and the only game that was duplicated was Tetris, from both Robert and Bob. Graham's choice of faster, harder, more challenging Cuba gets trebled after his win. So let's set things going and see what we get. Okay, slowing down, looks like it's not going to be Cuba. Cool, okay, so it doesn't really get any more classic uh, than Tetris. Um, this is the biggest selling franchise or, of like numbers of games. Uh, I think in history has sold over 500 million different games, I think. Um, so yeah, this is going to be the classic Atari Tetris. I'll go make a video and be back in a sec. So our next game is Atari Tetris, released in 1989. Unlike some later releases that play in a more infinite mode, this game has levels where you have to clear a certain number of lines per stage. And as the game progresses, the stages become increasingly complex, with differing amounts of blocks as you start. Which to be honest, is a little different way of playing Tetris, not something I'm used to. Atari did bring this home on the NES under the Tengen label, but they did get in a bit of trouble over that. Nintendo didn't actually give them the license for the game, and so the game was withdrawn after selling about 100,000 copies making it a bit of a collector's item. Nintendo then released their own version of Tetris, which obviously sold a lot more, but some people prefer that Tengen original. Here, we'll be using the set one ROM and default settings as usual. The game's on the Mister, which is great from my perspective. So before we finish, let's find out what our next genre will be. I have 12 submissions for our next genre. Four of those genres have two votes each. Maze, Fighting, Sports, and Single Screen Shooter have two votes. Ian's choice of semi-naked men is an interesting one. Let's see if it comes up. So let's set things going and see what we get. Okay, slowing down. Okay, looks like it's going to be sports. Interesting one. Um, 
I can't say I know that many arcade sports games, but there are there's certainly a, a number. Um, so that'd be good. So yeah, I hope you all enjoy playing a bit of Tetris. I certainly will. And I'll be back in a couple of weeks with the scores. See you then. Yeah.